What's your best Terask story, part two? Now I have a good slash unique one to tell, so I'll put it here. Basically, we had followed a rogue through a cave. We didn't know who it was or what she was doing there, so we wanted answers. She ended up leading us into a trap where this legendary vampire guy was planning some shenanigans. I can't remember specifically, but I do know it would be a campaign changer. So anyway, he ordered his guards, which I believe were comprised of orcs and wyverns to kill us. The vampire guy would get involved in this at the same time. Now, at the time, we weren't aware of all the rules for a certain spell that ended up being used. The spell in question was Phantasmal Force. It casts an illusion on the target, and they can get harmed by it. You can probably guess by now that the illusion that was created was of a Terrasque. But, at the time, we weren't aware of a little tidbit. The illusion could only do 1d6 damage to a target. We all half-jokingly made the assumption that the illusion would do the same amount of damage that the real thing would. I don't need to say anything other than the vampire guy was utterly eviscerated by this and made his guards utterly shit themselves, as the spell only targets one person, and, due to the workings of the spell, they didn't know what it even was, just that we had something to do with it, and we were responsible for their master's death. Moral of the story? Read the fucking rules. In my current campaign, certain planes are for these powerful beings called God Seeds competing for the Pearl Throne or Godhood via consuming all the potential on their given planet, destroying the plane. God Seeds are created by events with massive shifts in energy, also known as potential. For example, one God Seed, the Woken Forest, was created when the first humans were created. Our party is on a mission currently to destroy all of them, as any God Seed, even the most lawful good God Seed, will assure the destruction of everything our party has cared and fought for. At this point in the game, we had been tracking down the God Seed, the Open Heart which feigned to be a lawful good god with an upstanding church and following. In reality, however, the open heart was a twisted abomination that would mind control powerful people by filling their heads with purple crystals, allowing it to spawn those people over and over to do its bidding. We were attending a political convention hosted by the Mariner's Guild. We found that certain politicians and figures, including one of our party, were being killed and replaced with doubles controlled by the open heart. It was at the ball did the plan of the open heart come into plain view. The doubles it had created were positioned to spread chaos and kill almost every powerful figure at the event. We decided to crash the open heart's party, along with what we found out later was the head of the Assassin's Guild, by teleporting on top of the public face of the open heart, Cersei, who we have also killed roughly 20 times. We tore her apart and around, and began to kill anyone controlled by the open heart. This pretty much sent the ball into chaos, and the heads of those controlled by the open heart began to open up, and the crystals within them began to glow, and the ground beneath us quaked. Most god seeds inhabited a deep dungeon filled with monsters that fit to their theme and powers, but the open heart is no regular god seed. Rising through the floor of the building came a fucking undead Terrasque. One of my characters, a summoner named Josiah, was imploded by the God Seed within the Terrasque for even attempting to wound the damn thing. The rest of the party promptly book it the fuck out to plan how to even kill the damn thing. We ended up running around on the island the convention was hosted on to rally the forces of every force there to try and take down the beast. And through their combined efforts, my other character channeling essentially a spirit bomb into the mouth of the undead Terrasque, and our fighter diving into the mouth of the beast to pull out the god seed within, we managed to destroy the open heart and its terrible monster. TLDR, party fought against a godlike crystal piloting an undead Terrasque. And it sounded fucking awesome, too. Not my story but my brothers. So their group is at the end of their campaign. I don't remember too much of the actual campaign, just the Terrasque incident. And they each got a wish scroll. Of course, being given something like that, they'd have to face something difficult before they could use it. Of course, it's a Terrasque. Well, they're about to be defeated, and my brother decides he's gonna wish to go back right as they get the scrolls. Ensues a Back to the Future plotline of like 30 versions of my brother's character, only my brother's character knows about, as he keeps trying to beat this Terrasque. Eventually, he gets creative and predicts where it's gonna teleport in, and places his sword in the place where the eyeball would be. It hits, and rolls a nat 20. Now, something I purposefully neglected to mention is that my brother's sword is what's referred to as a Wobberjack sword. 
Sword, which will roll a D100 on a table to cast spells and effects. Being a nat 20, the DM did something special where the table would be level 20 spells. The sword cast Wish. Wish. So now, with the knowledge that he has two wishes, my brother uses the nat 20 wish to ask for a god to kill the Terrasque. Well, a rift in space-time occurs, and a giant hand from a time god comes out and crushes the Terrasque. Like it's a potato bug. What does my brother use his second wish on? Becoming a time god. He became the time god that saves him from the Terrasque. Too bad he canonically falls into madness after the campaign. I once played a game with a dude that was running a mage who he played as chaotic neutral. Part of the backstory of his mage was that when he was a kid, him and his family had fled from a city that was being destroyed by a Terrasque. Anyways, we ran the homebrew campaign for about three years before one boss battle got us all killed for reasons that were our own fault. When the team died, we decided to not continue and look into other things. So we spent the rest of that session bullshitting and whatnot. I was looking over my friend's character sheet and saw that he had a magical top hat in his inventory. I forgot what the name of it was, but I think it was a homebrew magical item. He had never mentioned having the top hat, so I asked him about it. Turns out that top hat had been in his inventory since day one. His plan for it was if he had ever encountered a Terrasque again, he was going to try and put it on the creature's head. What it would have done though was vastly increase intelligence and whatnot. He had talked to the DM about it and figured out what needed to be done but he wanted to turn the Terrasque from a seemingly mindless beast to an intelligent creature that could think beyond its hunger. Imagine a Terrasque that wasn't a slave to its instincts like an animal, but could think and make decisions about what it wanted to do, where it wanted to go, and what it wanted to gain in the world. I've got a fun Terrasque story from about a decade ago. I was playing a high-level 3.5e homebrew campaign with a few friends, somewhere around level 18. And as part of the story, the Terrasque had been unleashed on the city that our players called home. Our cleric and paladin, who shared a homebrew deity, and who actually physically met said deity earlier in the campaign, had been given the ability to summon their deity one time as a sort of magical auto-win. Our DM had forgotten all about this by the time the Terrasque showed up, but as the Terrasque showed up and breached the fortified walls of the city, our paladin reminded the DM about it, and she and our cleric retreated to the castle to perform the ritual while I, the party's monk, our sorcerer and ranger, went out to do what we could to delay the beast as long as possible and minimize casualties and collateral damage. With the help of the city guard, the elite guard, and the king's honor guard, we were able to keep the beast from getting very far in the city and help coordinate evacuations. About 20 or so rounds into the battle, there was a massive flash of light, and the god appears in the sky just hovering over the battlefield. He surveys everything for a moment, then drops down in front of the raging Terrasque. He suddenly winds back and punches the beast in the face and just atomizes the Terrasque's upper half in one hit. Think something out of One Punch Man, but with more divine energy. He then floated upwards and vanished in another flash of light. It was absolutely glorious. Our sorcerer knew the wish spell, so he was able to keep the Terrasque dead. The only way in 3.5e to actually kill the Terrasque is to do non-lethal damage to it equal to its HP plus 10, and then cast a wish or miracle spell on it to keep it dead since it only ever takes non-lethal damage. Our DM ruled that getting its upper half utterly annihilated was equivalent to that amount of damage. Our DM was kind of annoyed because he meant this to be an enormous struggle. The Terrasque is a CR 20 monster in 3.5e, and we were around level 18, and we just annihilated it with a lethal deus ex machina. But that's why you don't give out access to god summons unless you can regulate it, I guess. So my party first encountered the Terrasque when they were definitely not powerful enough to fight it, but my character was not the runaway type, and my DM was lenient. The Terrasque was outside of the city, and it was just my party and the beast itself. The party was in the middle of dashing away from it when I had an idea. I grabbed my fellow not-the-most-wise party member and told him my plan. A few rounds later, everything was prepared, so the party managed to find a place to hide, and I set my plan in motion. Using major image, I made an illusion of our party just standing there in the middle of a field. When it moved in for the bite, its head passed through the illusion and into the teleportation circle I had hidden under it. When this happened, the fighter used the action he readied to dispel the circle with a crossbow bolt from the side the head was sticking out of, and voila! One bodiless Terrasque. Turns out, 
even one of the deadliest monsters in D&D still needs its head. TLDR? Two level 10 characters killed a Terrasque using two spells and a crossbow. Not bad. While this isn't my personal story, I came across a story told by another person that I felt had to be shared. They didn't give too many details on the campaign, setting, or anything like that. I just know that it was their mother's character, and said character opened a portal to the positive energy plane. The portal would constantly heal everything in the area, but getting healed too much by the energy of the plane causes... Uh, problems. Too much healing and the poor soul just... explodes. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be good. At the time, the Terrasque apparently wasn't immune to this little drawback, unsure if it still is or not. So it got overhealed by the positive energy plane and just violently blew up. 